Ah, it's pretty empty in here. Hi, uh, everyone who is outside of the hall, if you can hear me, your moderator is requesting you to be inside of the hall, if they can hear me. And with this, I'd like to start with the official program, official panel discussion. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us here today in, the, in this exciting panel discussion where uh, we will be talking about from launching uh, to scaling up, uh, navigating through WordPress business pro product success. And we have a fantastic lineup of experts uh, who will be guiding us through the journey of establishing and growing a successful WordPress product business. Uh, we have uh, Atikur Rehman Tonmoy, uh, who is a full-stack digital marketer and WordPress enthusiast known for his expertise in connecting businesses with their target audience through effective digital marketing strategies. He is not only passionate about boosting businesses, but also nurturing individual growth. In his free time, Atikur enjoys traveling to new places, playing table tennis, uh, immersing himself in video games, and exploring diverse flavors in food. He also served as a co-organizer for Dhaka WordPress Meetup. Uh, on my right, we have Pravin Jha from Nepal. Uh, a seasoned WordPress expert, he is a visionary founder and CEO of uh, Everest Themes a uh, hub for WordPress products, including the Everest, Everest backup plugin, Everest news theme. Uh, he is also the mastermind behind Omnipress, a central hub for block themes designed for full site editing. Uh, before his journey into WordPress, uh, Pravin was a tech whiz who excelled in various technical projects. He enjoys uh, solving puzzles, with his which is reflected in his WordPress plugins that make it easy to customize WordPress without using coding skills. And nonetheless, we have Vikas from India. Vikas Singhal is founder of InstaWP, a WordPress enthusiast and with a remarkable entrepreneurial journey. His product is currently used by over 300,000 sites, uh, 3 lakh sites, uh, making him a true expert in WordPress products. Vikas loves engaging with the global WordPress community, solving problems for WordPress users, spending quality time with his friends, and sipping filter coffee with his friends. His previous endeavors include Express Tech, Quiz and Survey Master Plugin, Projectopia, and many more. Each of our panelists bring a wealth of knowledge and experience in the world of WordPress product businesses. And without further ado, let's dive into our discussion and learn from these WordPress experts on how to chart successful course for your WordPress product success. Uh, I think I should start with uh, Prabhindai. What was, what was your inspiration behind getting into WordPress or WordPress ecosystem? What inspired you? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Am I audible? Okay. So the basic things was that it is a premium, right? Uh, and open source. That is the main uh, inspiration behind that. Uh, being open source and code is open. So if you know, if you can extend it, you, you can just give back to community, uh, mo modify the code, right? Uh, use it as you like it. And then you are basically helping the community. That is the main inspiration. And my inspiration was also Sakin Sasha. Uh, when I was studying in engineering, my background is engineering, right? I'm electronics and a communication engineer. So. When I was in college, Sakin Sister Dai first introduced me in WordPress. After that, I started building uh, websites in WordPress, and that was just like getting a free theme, and then having a very low and cheap hosting, and then hosting, and then starting website to my uh, customers or clients. From there, I started, and then. On that journey, I failed so many difficulties on different things like migration and uh, backup security, and that leads to, lead me to uh, development of every backup plugins. Thank you, Dai. Uh, yes, we all agree that being open source, WordPress is uh, something everyone can be a part of, and the very welcoming WordPress community is something that drives everyone to get together. Uh, next, I would like to ask Atikur, uh, how do you deal with competition, especially when there are similar products uh, approaching in terms of marketing? How do you market a product that there are so many competitors out there? 
Thank you for the question. So first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am Atiku Rahman Tonmoy. Currently, I am serving as the CMO at Thimile, and I was the head of marketing at WeDevs. So I am truly honored to be here among such experienced panelists, and would love to learn lots of from them, and would love to share some knowledge. So the question that Paras has asked is a very good question. Since WordPress is a saturated market, and there are lots of plugins and themes, like uh, there are thousands of plugins and themes, and many of the themes and plugins offer similar kind of features. So it is really tough to uh, stand out among others. So first of all, I would like to tell that uh, before building a product in WordPress, you should think about the USP. You have to find out some unique features, and you have to do some competitor feature analysis. So when you will do competitive feature analysis, you will see uh, the features that is not available on their products, and you might work on them. And please make them as the USPs of your product. And you can easily promote them through different channels. So it is really tough to get more traffic in your site if you have a new site. So you must need to do some SEO and other stuff. And also like to get a good exposure, you can go for the influencer marketing because like people always want to follow what their uh, influencers are telling. So it is good for the new businesses to go for the influencer marketing, reach out to them and convince them to review your products. And also like uh, you may do different types of ads. It could be uh, like you could have some comparison pages for your product from there like you can easily highlight which features you are giving unique other than your competitors. There could be a comparison table. And in the hero section, you can easily enlist the competitor's brand name, right? And what you can do, you can use Google search ads using those competitor's brand name. Like competitor's brand name, then pricing. This would be the, your uh, search keyword, which you will be targeting. If you run this Google search ad, then you will get lots of click on, on, on the search ad and they will be landed up onto the comparison page. And they can find easily what type of features you are offering. If you are offering better features, then why they should go for another one, right? So you are just getting visitors of your competitors to your site using that com comparison page and Google search ads. And there are lots of other techniques and uh, I think you should focus on the uh, wordpress.org search ranking as well because it is really important to get ranked over there. People actually search their problems there and when they find, uh, the, when, when they see the search results, they go for the first or second one. They try it and if it is user friendly, they go for it. So you have to do some SEO optimization for your WordPress.org page as well. So yeah, that's all. And I will share some more details in other question answers. Yeah. Thank you, Atikur. Uh, that was detailed and a bit technical too. I think the audience have uh, grasped the USP thing. That is the most important. And then the other steps will follow after. I think we need a proper blog post from you. <laughs> yeah. uh, next, I would like to ask uh, Pikas. How do you identify gaps in the market to bring your product at the right fit? Okay. I should have taken my question before, right? <laughs> yes, I offered you. <laughs> thank you. So, uh, thank you for the question. Um, I think this question becomes really important for people who are starting uh, maybe a new plugin business or a mm. theme business mm. or any kind of online business. So, identifying gaps. Uh, there are multiple ways to do it. Uh, one of the ways which we do it is go to something which you like. Let's say you are building a blog plugin mm -hmm. and then you are go and try all the blog plugins out there. I think this also relates to a little bit what you said. Um, I used to read reviews, what others are saying for, let's say, a, a plugin is doing good in some ways, but also not doing good. Mm -hmm. like 
properly in, in other ways. So you make a list of those in an Excel sheet. Um, other ways is you go to online social groups uh, like Facebook, Reddit. Um, there may be community where like like this, and then you talk to people, right? Mm -hmm. And um, in these groups, you will see that. Uh, service providers, agencies, freelancers, or whoever you are targeting, they will post their questions, and you make a list of those questions, try to reply to them then and there, and th through your reply, you form a series of pattern, and that through that pattern, combined with the earlier Excel sheet, mm -hmm. you can come up with a list of gaps, which you can solve, right? And over a period of time, and you might have seen a lot of Twitter uh, X, Influences. <laughs> uh, they have built a lot of projects uh, every month or so. So uh, I think that's a separate topic of discussion on how once you identify the gap, how do you go about actually building it? So over yeah. to you. <coughs> thank you. Yes, I uh, comparing with potential future competitors would be one of the best ways to find the gaps and filling those gaps would make your product competitive. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, I would like to ask Prabhin Dai, how do you ensure user security when it comes to backup plugins or when you're storing a whole thing in a backup, how do you uh, maintain user security? Okay, actually this is a tough question. <laughs> and <coughs> so backup security means, uh, first of all, you need to understand the b basic principles where your site can be hacked and the code guidelines that WordPress has followed, you have to look the proper uh, sanitization things, uh, yes, and then form validations. Whenever you are asking some data from users, right, you need to validate those things, and it's a quite technical thing. So, first of all, security means that, uh, you see, if you see Everest Backup, we are not storing their data. We are just a platform, we are just a system where user can integrate their own hosting, they, they can store their file on their own storage server, right? So we are just a tool. We are not handling their files, but we are making a tool so that they can rely on our platform, on our systems, on our tools. And that is what we are taking it seriously because it's, it's like a quality. If you don't follow basic principles, then there's, there, there can be so many questions, right? So, the basic thing is that if you are, if you are playing with the data, you need to be conscious and then you, you need to be, uh, you need to be like, uh, don't, uh, don't put something that you just go and search something, you find the code and just don't put in your product. Mm. That is main things. You have to build your product from scratch and you have to know each and every step how your product is handling those things. Mm -hmm. That is the main things. Uh, it's not an overnight process that I'm going somewhere, finding the code and then I'm building a plugin, that's all. That is not the things, right? You have to build it from scratch. You know, you have to know everything, how your plugin is working and then how you are handling those uh, essential data. That is the main thing. Uh, thank you, Pravin Dai. Yes, understanding what you are developing yourself and applying all the principles, ethics, norms into your development could prevent all of those things. Uh, it could be a good start to maintain user security. Uh, I'd like to come back to Vikas, who has been a founder of multiple companies, working at multiple places at once. He will be returning very soon to attend a different program. In this busy schedule and your different endeavors, how do you allocate resources? How do you manage your resources on multiple? My, my resources, no, my no, time. Company resources. Company resources. Yeah. I think, yeah. To, to properly manage company's resources is primary responsibility of the founder. If you are unable or if you are not doing a good job of that, I think you will have a badly run company. Uh, that's your primary main responsibility. To do that, you need to prioritize what is important for your company right now. If you are building a product, if you are marketing a product, if you are supporting a product or operations, depending upon the requirement, you 
basically prioritize uh, the future, let's say for the three months, six months plan and a, and a 12 month plan. Mm. And then you go about allocating resources according to your company's priority. And see, every business has a goal. And that goal, if not achieved, at the end of the day, you have failed, mm. right? It's, it's not making money. Money is obviously the goal. But to solve the customer's problem and effectively placing yourself as a market leader, to solve that problem is your goal, right? And to do that, how many resources do you need? What are the tasks they need to complete? And then you go granular and then you allocate resources and then eventually you form a short term, a medium term and a long term plan. That's how I do it. Yeah, thank you. So that it all comes down to the founder and, and the central management of the company. To yeah, otherwise, it. means what, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So your company is like your child. You nurture it, you grow, you help it grow, you do everything as a parent. Com company resources will understand what I say, but my child will not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice point. So I would like to go back to uh, Atikur. Uh, can you share some effective uh, strategies on targeting audience? Like what specific strategy, strategy can help targeting what type of uh, audience? Yeah, yeah. Sure. So probably you have prepared the most toughest questions for me. <laughs> okay. So uh, here for creating effective marketing strategies, I would go for two different type of strategies. Like depend on the life span of the product. So there should be a pre-launch strategy and there should be a post-launch strategy. For, for uh, pre-launching any product, there should be some type of, type of go-to-market strategy. Do you know about go-to-market strategy? Anyone? Okay, so for creating go-to-market go to strategy, what you need to do, you have to define the value proposition of your product. So for whom you are creating your product? What type of benefits you are providing? So you have to define the value proposition. And then you have to find the buyer personas. What are the, uh, you have to create the buyer personas. What are the pain points your users might have? What type of goals they want to achieve? You have to figure it out. And then you have to prepare a checklist before launching what you would like to do to get a better exposure. So what you can do like many of the companies go for product hunt, right? So in product hunt, there are lots of people, uh, they, they can easily check what are the products have been uh, featured, they can easily uh, try the demo, they can easily go to the product site. So you can go for product hunt and also like you, you should have uh, private beta, public beta, like uh, before launching the product, you should ask feedback of your current users. If you have any leads, email leads, then you can send them email, offer some reward. None will try your product if you do not offer them any benefit. So maybe you can give, offer them 50 to 60% discount if they share any kind of feedback regarding your product. So do public beta testing, gather some features, ideas, and what are the issues your product have right now, you, you will get all the insights about your product. And then you, have, you, you could uh, do some webinar, you can create a dedicated landing page for that product, or you can do some social media marketing and other stuff. So there should be a, a specific marketing strategy for pre-launching with some checklist, and after like you have launched the product, so you have to scaling up, right? So in that case, you have to go to the product marketing life, is, life cycle phase. So it, it, it is a never ending process. You have to follow few things for scaling up the product. So I always go for pirate model. Do you know what is pirate model? Anyone pirate model? Anyone of you? So pirate model refers to double A triple R. Double A. A means acquisition, you have to find out how you can bring your potential audiences into your website or into your product page. Then activation, you have to somehow get those visitors lead. So here, like for acquisition, we go for SEO, social media marketing, influencer marketing, and then 
different type of like paid ads and other things to get the attention of the potential users and bring them to our website or product page. Whenever they landed to the product page, you have to somehow get those visitors' email address. So you have to make them, uh, like visitors need to be converted as a lead. So here you can use the demo option. So just give them an uh, option to try the product by their own hand. So here you can uh, create demos for your products, like InstaWP is doing that, right? We know that. So from InstaWP, you can easily create the demo. And you can also build it by yourself by doing custom development. So whatever you, ha you have, like whatever is convenient for you, you can go for it. And whenever you have collected the email leads, you can go for the email automation, right? There should be an email marketing funnel. You can easily uh, convince those uh, leads to be a paying customer. And then you have to consider the revenue phase. Double A has been finished, acquisition, activation. And then revenue phase, you have to somehow do some marketing activities to convert those leads into paying customer. And then retention. Yes, you have successfully converted those users into paying customer, but they, you have to nurture your product. You have to bring uh, uh, trendy features and effective features, and you have to uh, give them proper support. Then they will renew your product, right? So it would be retention, and the last one is referral. So somehow you have to, uh, you have to make a process where your users will refer your product to someone. So you can offer them two-sided referral option. And also like you can go for the influencer reach out. If the influencers uh, give the product review, then they will, uh, the, the product is automatically referred from that influencer. So this is the model I follow for scaling any of the products, double A, triple R. I hope it will help for the audiences. Thank you, Atikur. That was a brief detailed. I hope the audience remember and implement that into their new products. Uh, I would like to come to Prabindai. Uh, so what are some critical elements to consider before launching a product? You have a product ready, but what are some of the things you should consider before launching it? OK, so first of all, you need to consider about the support, right? how you are going to give the support because the initial feedback is most important i think so uh, so if if you have already prepared about the support support system how you are going to uh, respond the questions that might be asked from the initial users right that one another is pricing you need to set up the pricing in such a manner that uh, users user can get the best value value for money right and then generally what we do we just see the pricing of our competitor sites competitor service and then we set our pricing accordingly but that is not correct from my perspective because i think atikur can explain these things in more details because uh, if you if the user didn't get the value for the money they will not purchase your product that is the main things and another things is like uh, you need to build your ecosystems like how you are going to um, how you are going to uh, get the user ecosystem right like email list how we are going to retarget everything should be considered before launching a product uh, thank you Rubindai. so yes pricing models could be one of the most important things, how the users are going to perceive it. And then once someone pays for a product, they will definitely be seeking for the support because many of them might need one. Uh, next, I would like to ask Atikur. Uh, does cultural differences in your audience affect the way you market? Um, let me rephrase that. Does the same marketing strategy work in South Asia and in Europe? Is the return same or is it different? Yeah, you you have proved it once again that you have prepared the toughest question for me. <laughs> okay, so here I would like to focus on the localization process. Like, yeah, 
for the south asia maybe most of the people are active on facebook but in western countries they hardly use facebook so here maybe you need to go for two different type of uh, social media marketing strategy just give an, an example regarding social media okay so here for for south asia people you can easily create some retargeting ads in facebook so that like the south asian people get to know more about your product and you can do facebook ads marketing and for western people maybe you can go for twitter or x marketing there is also an ads uh, platform so you can easily create ads in twitter or x and also like for uh, just uh, i just shared about localization so it is really important to localize your content say for example we always focus on the english spoken countries right like us we always build our marketing content and strategies based on us market but have you checked your google analytics data that other than us country usa other than usa which countries are giving you uh, revenue and how much percentage of revenue you are getting from only us if you check then you will find maximum you you are generating 60 to 70% revenue and you are generating other 40 to 30% revenue from different countries right but you are not strategizing or you are not uh, planning for those countries for a single time like you haven't prepared a single content for those countries so what you can do you can uh, localize those content you can go and check google analytics data you can find the top converted countries other than us market and then analyze their language you can create a translated dedicated and translated landing page for those users you can uh, easily like if, if you check the pro users from if there is any pro users of your product from those countries you may request him or her to submit a testimonial definitely you have to give some value to her or him you may offer him a renewal a free renewal for for next year uh, uh, renewal time right so in exchange of the value she or he might be ready to provide the testimonial and that should be based on his or her own language say for example you are targeting the country of germany so the the video should be the testimonial video should be in germany language and you have also created the landing page using the germany content right and just what you need to do you need to just uh, go for a google search ad targeting specifically the, the germany country and whenever anyone will search on google uh, writing the problem that your product is giving or so uh, the solution you are providing they will see your ad and whenever they will click on it they will land it to the page where you he or she will find the language the translated language on his own lang own language and also he will find the testimonial of his of a, a customer who is from the same country he belongs so it it will be a uh, there will be an impact where he might be emotionally attached and may consider that yes i am at the right place and also like you have to translate your product if you have plugin then translate it in that language if you have theme translate it in that language you can do the localization process process in like this way thank you <coughs> uh, thank you atikur yes localization definitely is important i would like to add just one more point to it yeah i think atikur i know i'm not sure whether we have tried um, what about parity pricing have you tried that no i actually didn't try it we have tried in one of our plugin and it works really well so generally means your pricing is targeted as you said mostly towards the western countries but lot of people in our part of the region want that plugin or product but they cannot afford it so parity pricing is where you offer location based pricing mm. and you can offer like a 20% to 30% discount and it means you can use tools like parity bar to do um, that yeah. Uh, thank you because th that is that could be one of the important things on pricing <coughs> your product uh, next i would like to ask because yourself uh, could you briefly share about product led growth should that uh, be implemented from the inception itself or it only happens once you are big 
do you grow with your product in the beginning itself actually plg is product led growth for people who don't know in the audience uh, is a technique where you grow the product in a way that your users are demanding or you are kind of experiencing your users how they are using your product so your growth is led by the product rather than some kind of marketing or ad spend so by design it is meant for initial growth mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, people like me uh, or people who are developer like Prabhinda, uh, they have no idea about marketing when they start. So product is the only thing which can drive the growth, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I think that can be a really good way to get the initial phase of growth. And there are many ways how people are doing it. One is building in public on X or wherever you are active on social, mm -hmm. uh, find that audience, log basically uh, follow them, uh, get a network going mm -hmm. and start sharing whatever you are building. Eventually somebody will notice and they will start to follow you. And mm -hmm. that's what actually happened to me. I was not active on uh, X and then I posted about InstaWP on a couple of forums like uh, some, some Slack groups. There are a lot of Slack groups which are really good. Mm -hmm. So you can actually join them, they are free of cost and there are some paid groups also where you can join and you can start posting about your product. So you don't, you have to be organic. Uh, what are you actually building is, should be the driving factor. You are solving a problem, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the solving problem part has to be the forefront runner of what you're doing. And then you start posting things like, this is the thing which I have built today. Maybe a screenshot, maybe a small video walkthrough. Uh, that will help the user understand what is that they are going, going mm -hmm. to imagine or see uh, when they use the product. And that has really helped us in the initial phases and is still helping us. Thank you, Vikas. Uh, that is something our audience would definitely be taking care of while launching a new product. Uh, I would go, like to go back to Prabhupada Prab Dai. How do you see AI and machine learning affecting in the future of WordPress products? Uh, will, it, will things be easier? Will things be competitive? Will, what's your take on this? Okay, it's one of the emerging topics here, right? And then it's not affecting, I think it will facilitate WordPress in the future. It will provide much more tool, a better tool that you don't have to do much of your tedious task, right? Just in a click of button, uh, you can, you, you will, you can able to do your things. Uh, for example, I can say start of Lib, right? Just in a click you are building your sandbox. That means if you think for WordPress, right? In the future, I think there, are, there will be an AI tool that will uh, um, overtake your lots of work and then you will be able to create a website. For example, there is also few sites, few website, right? That will generate an entire website. Just you need to provide your slog, business slog, what type of website you are trying to make. Just provide the uh, slog and they will create a website. So this will help in your business and then the way you are working now will be changed. You don't have to do much more uh, manual task, all will be automated. And this is a tool, AI is a tool that is to help us. So we will be there, WordPress will be there, only tools and uh, techniques are going to change and that is, I think, in the favor of us. That will be in favor of us. Uh, thank so, you, Dai. So, just <laughs> I want to make one point. For example, right now, if you want to make a demo site or template, uh, manually you need to spend a week, right, to create a nice template. There will be a tool that will create thousands of template in a few minutes. So basically, they are helping us, right? They will be help. They will be helping us. Uh, thank you, Dai. AI is uh, definitely going to be on the positive side for everyone, uh, except for a few exceptions. <laughs> Do not make your own works on AI. <laughs> so I think uh, I should go back to Atikur once again. Uh, does affiliate marketing really work? What's your take on 
affiliate marketing or is something else better than affiliate marketing? Yeah. Is that a tough question? No, no. <laughs> let, let me ask you a question. Like, are you an affiliate of any of, any of the products? I have been an affiliate of some products, okay. yes. Okay, great. So it works. <laughs> okay, so basically there are two, point of, two, two types of point of view. Like, are you asking this question on behalf of an affiliate? Marketer or no, on behalf of someone who is launching a product or okay, okay. in or that owners. case exactly. owners yeah okay in that case uh, I would say there should be a standard on the revenue percentage from affiliates like it should be five to ten percent maybe so if you have a good number of affiliates then they will definitely promote your products through their content. It could be a blog or it could be a YouTube video or even I have seen lots of uh, course instructors who use the affiliate promotion and uh, they teach their students using their course curriculum and course content featuring the uh, product and different solutions. So uh, here a product owner should target a group of people who, who have a very good engagement and impact on social media or the, uh, the platform they are currently using. Like if he has a blog, con blog site, then maybe uh, he can check the monthly data of his blog site's visitor. If he is a video content creator, then he can check the uh, subscriber list or recent videos views. And if even any course instructor, then he can, the product owner can check how many students have been enrolled on, on his courses. So from that, he has to prepare a list of affiliates whom he should be reached out. And then, uh, like also I, I have seen in recent time, uh, product owners offer different tiers of affiliate commissions for different affiliates. Like in landing page, uh, of, of affiliates registration, they offer 30% commission, suppose. And when the person that he is reaching out is a very impactful one, he is offering to that person more than 30%. It could be 40% or 50%. So there is, there the product owner should make some personalization and according to the reach out, the impact that affiliates might have, he can offer uh, personalized uh, commissions for, for those. And I believe uh, nurturing affiliates is also important. So you have to somehow uh, make some contest. Maybe like in the Black Friday, Cyber Monday time, we always look forward to getting more sales, right? So in that time, you can run a contest. Say for example, for the time frame of seven to 10 days, if any of the affiliates can bring X number of sales, they will be converted to a super affiliate. That means they will get a better percentage of commission for lifetime. So this type of contest might help you to, to get a better conversion rate from your affiliates. And also you have to check uh, the affiliates data. That means maybe some of the affiliates are bringing lots of traffic to your website, but they are not converting. So what you can do, you can manually reach out to that affiliates and uh, let them, ap uh, just appreciate them that yes, you are doing really great. You are bringing lots of visitors in our site, but there might be some scope to increase the conversion rate. Here you can put some coupon code maybe, maybe give some discount so that the visitors can, uh, can, can get the motivation to get converted. So here you can analyze data and do the affiliate stuff. And I believe five to 10% revenue can be achieved from affiliates. Thank you. <coughs> uh, thank you, Atikur. Mm, so affiliates really work. <laughs> so the next uh, I would like to ask Vikas, how important do you feel partnerships uh, are in the field of WordPress as you are currently practicing a lot of partnerships? Uh, how important do you think that would be for the growth and success of a product? Depending on the product, I think uh, partnership can be a gro great growth driver. For us, we provide services to almost anybody in the WordPress ecosystem. So we can partner with almost anybody. 
but even if you are a plugin or a theme company uh, you can still partner with others uh, on a contextual basis depending upon who are you partnering with so a plugin company can partner with a theme company so that they can bundle them and uh, same with others as well yeah. you can partner with a hosting company and let them bundle your plugin or theme in their product and we are doing the same uh, with uh, a uh, lot of folks so everest backup we have already bundling in our uh, site creation flow i think partnership is uh, uncharted territory so far uh, for a lot of folks because it means people think that this may not result uh, in an output first second it is not trivial to approach a partner you have to either attend a word camp or nurture that network and then you go for partnership or you don't find that organic way of partnership but by mimicking i think mimicking is one of the best way to do a lot of jobs for example whatever atikur has today shared i think is just 10% or maybe a few percent of what he knows mm -hmm. so to to know about to go go inside his mind just go to his uh, work the latest work which is doing and you will know maybe go to the affiliate landing page and you will know what goes in his mind so similarly you can go with the partnerships which we are announcing which they are announcing or anybody else is announcing and then you can figure out okay so this guy can partnership with this company and this can partnership with this company so this is the way of how you can approach a partnership in terms of partnership work they they really do because we are getting a lot of uh, uh, lot of leads from all the companies which we are partnering with the easiest form of partnership is just do a co marketing maybe a guest blog exchange or or a newsletter mention and anybody will be happy to do that and means you have to also offer something in return um, so this is like a give and take relationship mm -hmm. and but once you figure it out i think this can be really good mm -hmm. thank you partnerships definitely seems to be promising if done the right way and uh, vikas has just told how to do it the right way so i would like to go back to pravin bhai mm, what are some of the strategies you have found effective in maintaining a product quality while scaling up so when you are going big there could be something that brings the quality down what are some of those things or some of those strategies that you keep in mind so we are going from small to big but this should not change okay so basically it's uh, scaling right how yeah. we can scale a product so <coughs> uh, um, from my perspective i can say initially we built a product right and that is our product our uh, what we are like to make we build it right after that we need to listen the users of the product users should drive the product future actually so once you build the product once you market it and then after some um, few years you have to think that this product doesn't belongs to myself anymore it's now on the hand of users you have to listen the users feedback you have to listen the users uh, feature request then you have to decide uh, is that feature request is the primary goal of my product and what is the primary goal how i can uh, make my user happy that is the main things so once you go and listen each and every feedback of your users uh, you can easily predict your product future and then uh, for scaling there is something like automation if you go for automation and if you try to automate each and every steps that are repeating and then you are certain level of uh, <coughs> scaling right so if you put automation and if you automate uh, try to automate each and every steps that is time consuming or that is repeating repeats repeating action then uh, that is one major things i th you can scale up another is technology you have to bring the technology in your product if you uh, bring the technology and if you automate if you think for a uh, thousands or millions of users if you uh, if you are more conscious on your uh, um, 
what we call speed or performance. These things, if you consider and if you think about these things, then you can scale it up in a huge audience, I think. Thank you, Dai. Uh, so I would like to keep it short. And Atikur, would you please answer in really short now? We are running out of time. Uh, can you share a specific strategy that has significantly boosted your uh, WordPress product engagement? The one strategy that worked really well? It would take long time. <laughs> so should I answer? Uh, try to keep it short. OK. Maybe one or two strategies. Only one. Only one. It, it will take time. <laughs> OK, so keeping it short, uh, I would like to ask how many uh, from here have tried Facebook ads marketing? Facebook ads? Anyone here? Awesome. Yeah, there are some cool people. OK. So uh, do you know the differences between reach and impression in Facebook? Reach means the the number of reach refers to the unique ad, ad, ad impression. That means, uh, say for example, I have seen an ad, it should be counted at, as one reach. But if I see that ad for five times, then the impression would be five. So when we run Facebook ads, we have seen that uh, when you have created a targeted audience and you run ads, the number of reach is getting lower and the number of impressions is getting higher. So the same group of people is seeing your ads repeatedly. There might be, uh, there like if your ads is being seen uh, by the same group of people, then you are not getting enough fresh audience to reach out, right? So what you can do, you can, uh, create custom audiences based on your website experiences, like those who have visited a specific pages, and also you can use custom audience based on Facebook page engagement, those who have engaged with your page, or uh, those who, had, who, who have engaged in your ads. So you can create different types of custom audiences, and most of us, we do, include the custom audiences in our ads. But what you need to do, you just need to exclude those. Whenever you run any ads, you just exclude all of the custom audiences and go for the targeting. In this way, you can easily reach out the fresh audiences. That means those who have already interacted with your ad or those who have already visited your site, they will not be able to see your ad. Facebook will exclude them. So this is the marketing strategy I have applied, and we got 500% plus ROS, return on ad spend. So uh, this is, I have named it as a hard exclusion, like you have to create custom audiences and you have to exclude them, then you have to uh, make the targeting properly. Thank you. Thank you, Atikur. Uh, I think this could be your last question for Vikas. Uh, what what role what role does involvement in this community help in the growth of your product? Uh, since you are one of the active members in the community, in your experience, does this involvement contribute to the success of your product? It's <coughs> it's difficult to assess uh, the tangible output of the role of uh, my engagement. My engage because I want to, mm -hmm. uh, not because uh, it's about the product. Uh, but what I do get in return is that a lot of people now know about InstaWP uh, by doing various activities like such as a sponsorship of uh, WordCamp or organizing local meetup and such activities. Um, I think I, sh I should be doing more, uh, especially in the local, um, in, in, in our part of the world. Um, but I think engaging in community not only helps with the product, but also helps you with uh, networking with a lot of folks around the world. Um, people ask me when you sponsor uh, a WordCamp, do you get conversions? Obviously, you don't get conversions, right? Uh, people are not here to actually use your product and then pay for it. <coughs> so that doesn't happen ever. So don't expect that. Uh, but what does happen is people will remember your product and 
remember you as a person and eventually at some word camp you will have a talk where it it leads to an outcome and you can't measure that it's 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 like love right it can happen anywhere thank you for that uh, we are a brief out of time uh, i would like to take some questions from audience uh, audience please if you have any questions raise your hands and our mic runner volunteers will be supporting you with the mic